We're traveling on Highway 195 South to 93 East out of Haleville, Alabama. We're in Winston County and we're looking for the resting place of Maxwell Emmett Buttram. Now anyone that's ever paid a dime to watch a Saturday matinee would recognize Pat Buttram as the sidekick of cowboy star Gene Autry. Others will recognize him as the likable con man, Mr. Haney, that manages to sell Oliver Douglas things that he don't want, and the popular TV show, Green Acres. Pat Butcher was born January the 8th, 1915, in the small town of Addison, Alabama, to Wilson McDaniel Buttram, a Methodist minister, and his wife, Mary Emmett Maxwell. Pat had four brothers and three sisters. His father was a Methodist circuit rider, which meant the family moved quite often. It's been said that money was scarce and the family lived hand to mouth. Pat went to several schools while growing up, but in 1932, he graduated from Mortimer Jordan High School in Morris, Alabama. The building where Pat graduated is now the William E. Burkett Handicap Center. In 2011, Mortimer Jordan High School moved to a new building a few miles away. After finishing high school, Pat entered the Birmingham Southern College to study for the ministry. But after being there only a few months, he became interested in the drama department and won a part in the school play. During Pat's performance, he was spotted by an executive from the local Birmingham radio station, WSGN. To make extra money, he took a job as an announcer on the morning show. Seeing Pat's potential as a radio comic, a friend on the staff of WSGN drove Pat to Chicago to interview with one of the nation's most popular stations, WLS. His interview was conducted at the 1933-34 Chicago World's Fair. WLS announcers pretended to be interviewing a member of the audience. While picking Pat to give his perspective as a southern country boy of what he thought of the fair. His interview was so funny and went so good he was hired as a comic for WLS's National Barn Dance, calling himself the Winston County Flash. When Pat was introduced on stage at the barn dance, he would tell the audience that they could dance in the aisles and they could even tear the place down if they wanted to. We don't care. It don't belong to us. And in 1935, Pat was at a restaurant when he met Dorothy Marie McFadden, a cigarette girl, and she also worked as a stenographer. They went together for almost a year, but the couple married on August the 2nd, 1936. Unfortunately, Dorothy was unable to have children, so the couple decided to adopt. Their young daughter, Gail, was adopted from the Tennessee Children's Home in Memphis run by the notorious Georgia Tan. On December the 21st, 1941, Pat lost his beloved mother, Mary Emmett Maxwell Butcher. She was buried in the family plot at the Maxwell Chapel Methodist Church, Winston County, Alabama. Mary was 60 years old. By 1942, Pat had a one-hour show on NBC and a 30-minute show for Murphy Feed on WLS. From time to time, Buttern would appear on WLS's National Barn Dance with their top star, Gene Autry. The top cowboy star in 1941 was Gene Autry and sidekick Smiley Burnett that Gene had hired in 1934. But in 1942, Gene Autry notified his studio that he intended to enlist in the military. World War II had begun and Gene wanted to serve. The studio told him that if he enlisted, they would promote Roy Rogers as the King of the Cowboys. Gene enlisted anyway. He enlisted in the Army Air Force and piloted a C-109 transport. He flew as part of a dangerous airlift operation over the Himalaya Mountains between India and China, nicknamed the Hump. 
1944, Pat took part in a movie about the National Barn Dance with the same name. Also in 1944, Pat went to work for Roy Rogers. Now this is Pat Roy Dale with Gabby Hayes on Roy's radio show in November of 1944. Pat soon left the Rogers show because he already had two sidekicks. And in 1945, when Gene Autry was discharged from the military, his longtime partner and sidekick, Smiley Burnett, had obligations and was unable to continue as Gene's partner. Gene then remembered the comedian that he had worked with on the National Barn Dance, Pat Buttram. However, on June 1, 1946, Pat and his wife, Dorothy, divorced. She refused to let him see their daughter, Gail. It'd be another four years before he'd be able to see her again. Dorothy will marry twice more after her divorce from Buttram. She will pass away on 13 February 2000 at the age of 84. By 1948, Gene Autry had asked Pat to come to Hollywood. He wanted him for his partner and sidekick to take the place of Smiley Burnett. His first movie with Autry was Strawberry Rond that also starred Gloria Henry. This will be the first of some 40 films that Gene and Pat will make together, not including over 100 radio and TV episodes. Their friendship will grow strong through the years and will last until Pat's death in 1994, only four years before Gene's. It's been said that the two would meet for lunch once a week and would speak on the phone almost every day. According to author Sandra Grabman in her book on the life of Pat Buttram entitled The Rockin' Chair Humorist, Buttram was a kind and thoughtful man, helpful to his friends and family when he saw a need. This is what is left of Camp Maxwell, created by Pat and his older brother Gus. It was a place for handicapped youth to have fun. The camp closed after the brothers' death. In 1949, Gene and Pat, again with Gloria Henry, will star in Riders in the Sky. Actress Mary Beth Hughes, also in the film, will make a lasting impression on Pat because years later, when he becomes the most sought after after dinner speaker in Hollywood, as a joke, Pat would say, that might be fun, but it's not as much fun as Mary Beth Hughes on location. Or he'd say, that was so much fun, I believe it was more fun than Mary Beth Hughes on location. And sometimes he'd say, Mary Beth Hughes was always a lot of fun on location, whether she was in the film or not. The next year in 1950, Pat met his future wife, Sheila Ryan on the set of Mule Train. Sheila was actually Gene Autry's leading lady. Also in 1950, while filming The Peacemaker for the Gene Autry show in a secluded location, Pat was severely injured when a propped cannon exploded, sending shrapnel that cut a 12-inch gash that exposed and punctured his lung. It severed an artery in his leg and other lacerations. Pat was so severely injured, he was not expected to live. Two other crew members were slightly injured, Jimmy Loomis and Jeffrey Brousseau. Pioneer Town, a movie location, was four miles on a dirt road from Yucca Valley. It took so long for help to arrive that Gene had Dr. Ennis from 29 Palms flown in on his private plane to administer first aid before the ambulance arrived. Pat was then taken to the Ennis Hospital. Gene Autry stuck by Pat with encouragement at his darkest hour. Here is Autry visiting him after several months in the hospital. Gene also supported Pat financially by including him on several of his financial dealings. Pat will be visited by his daughter Gail while in the hospital and they'll renew their relationship after she becomes an adult. After Pat's recovery, he kept a newspaper article about the accident and often would pull it out to show people as a joke, 
it read, Cowboy star Gene Autry almost hurt in explosion. Pat thought that was funny. In 1951, Pat would partner with Gene and Gail Davis in Valley of the Fire, and there would be three other movies that year. On December the 26th, 1952, Pat Bultram married actress Sheila Ryan. They met on the set of Mule Train two years earlier, back in 1950. Sheila had co-starred with Gene Autry and Roy Rogers in several movies. She had been married twice before, first to cowboy star Alan Rocky Lane in 1945 and divorced one year later. In 1947, she married actor Edward Norris. They divorced in 1950. Sheila appeared in 60 films and was considered a leading lady. She will remain married to Pat for 22 years until her death in 1975. In 1952, Pat and Jean played in four films, one of which was Bob Dwyer. Ann James was the leading lady. Pat played as Buckeye Buttram. Pat was given different names in all of his movies, and Jean was having a hard time remembering what Pat's name was. So Jean gave orders that all of Pat's characters from now on would be named Pat Buttram. Less than two years after Pat and Sheila married, on the 11th of March, 1954, they had a daughter, Catherine, nicknamed Carrie. Carrie will marry Michael P. Gagliano, and they will have two daughters, Natalie and Angie. Carrie will pass away 16 August, 2007, from cancer. She was 53 years old. Pat and Autry will often go on trips, visiting movie theaters that showed their movies. According to Pat's niece, Mary Buttram Young, who was Gus's daughter, remembered going to Birmingham to see Uncle Pat on tour. She remembered the excitement around Pat being a movie star. She also said that her Uncle Pat was a successful rancher and stock market speculator and he was an avid Civil War buff, probably stemming from his background with his grandfather, Elijah Wilson Buttram, being a sergeant with Company H, 65th Georgia Infantry, Confederate States of America. On March the 12th, 1963, Pat Buttram's father, Wilson McDaniel Buttram, passed away. He's buried beside his wife, Mary Emmett Maxwell, who passed away in 1941. They're buried at the Maxwell Chapel, United Methodist Church in Winston County, Alabama. Wilson was a Methodist minister, a circuit preacher. That meant that he would preach at a different church each Sunday, and in the early years, circuit preachers rode horses or buggies. In 1962, Pat was making an appearance on the TV show, The Real McCoys, that starred Walter Brennan. In 1965, he was hired to play Mr. Haney in the television series Green Acres. Haney was the local con man who always seemed to know what poor Oliver Douglas was in need of and always showed up at the right time having the right thing for sale. Green Acres will have a six-year run, ending in 1971. Buttram will appear in 144 episodes out of 170. He said when he was hired for Green Acres, he had just finished the movie Roust About with Elvis Presley, and he had seen Elvis's manager, Colonel Tom Parker, in action. Pat said that he patterned his part as Mr. Haney on what he observed from Colonel Parker. Now, while doing Green Acres, he also appeared as Mr. Haney on Petticoat Junction and found time in 1968 to make an appearance on The Dean Martin Show. In 1971, CBS canceled Green Acres as a part of the Rural Purge, even though it had maintained high ratings throughout its six-year run. Also canceled was Beverly Hillbillies and Petticoat Junction. CBS was afraid that it was getting the name of being a country network and wanted to change its image. Around 1973, Pat and his daughter Carrie learned that their wife and mother, Sheila Ryan, 
was diagnosed with an unknown lung disease. She was slowly losing her health and breathing was becoming difficult. By 1975, she was living in the Motion Picture Hospital in Woodland Hills, where they had individual apartments with a full-time medical staff. After 22 years of marriage, on the 4th of November, 1975, Sheila Buttram passed away from an unknown diagnosed lung disease. She will be interred at the Bahia Memorial Park in North Hollywood. Sheila was only 54 years old. Pat will try to go on after his loss by making guest appearances on different TV shows. But five years after he lost Sheila, he will receive bad news himself. After surgery for cancer, he'll move back to Winston County, thinking to spend the rest of his days. According to a family friend, Shirley Suddeth, Pat thought that he was dying and had this house built close to Count Maxwell and the church where his parents were buried. She said that she was visiting here one morning when he offered her a cup of coffee. She hated instant coffee, but after accepting the offer, she noticed him placing three heaping spoonfuls in a cup of lukewarm water. I should have received the Academy Award for my coffee drinking performance, she said. However, I did refuse the second cup. After being home a couple of years and getting better in receiving offers back in Hollywood, Pat returned to California. In 1983, he started the Golden Boot Award. It was to honor heroes and heroines of the Western movies. Not only actors, but it includes stunt people and anyone that furthered the Western movie industry. During the following years, Pat appeared on several TV shows, such as The Fall Guy with Lee Majors and Night Rider with several others. He will also be the voice of Toon Bullet One in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Pat, in 1988, received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's located on the south side of 6000 block of Hollywood Boulevard. From 1989 through 1991, Pat will be the voice of Cactus Jack, Cactus Joe, and Cactus Jimmy in Garfield and Friends. And in 1990, he will do a cameo in Back to the Future, Part 3. In 1995, in a goofy movie, he will lend his voice to Possum Park MC. It was his last performance, and the film was dedicated to his memory. On January the 8th, 1994, Maxwell Pat Buttram, a gifted comedian that was kind enough to share his laughter with the world, passed away at the UCLA Medical Center from kidney failure. Pat Buttram was 78 years old. Pat was taken home to rest with his family at the Maxwell Chapel Cemetery in Winston County, Alabama. <laughs>